voilà, nous arrivons là pour nous euh, faire nos topics conversation. Par exemple, ici, nous avons un sixième. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons un grand plaisir pour nous inviter des Dimoun qui pour venir dans nos studios euh, pour causer un petit peu loin un projet qui n'est pas, euh, pas ni trop asé, ni trop nouveau, mais il y a un projet qui peut gagner euh, zéré ici, Cécile. Par un Dimoun qui n'est pas nouveau, lo, la scène, bonjour, Cécile. Et ça, c'est John qui pour venir aujourd'hui pour matin pour causer un petit peu loin un projet qui est là-dedans et il est avec l'organisation um, Civil Society qui sorti um, overseas et ça c'est Arasa aujourd'hui mon son représentant son directeur aussi qui est présent dans le studio ça t'a donné mon grand plaisir aujourd'hui bon matin pour introduire autres premièrement nous faisons créole um, John bonjour comment ça va bonjour bonjour Sylvie un plaisir pour avec vous aujourd'hui bon matin encore merci beaucoup And of course, we have, Doctor, I will let you introduce yourself. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you so much. My name is Dr. Ndombim Chuchuti. I'm from Zimbabwe. And you are the director of ARASA? Yes, please. So a little bit about what ARASA represents. ARASA <coughs> is um, a partnership. It's yes. an organization that represents civil society yes. in 18 countries. And uh, we work with uh, diverse uh, practitioners or mm -hmm. diverse organization for one common purpose okay. of not leaving anyone behind regarding HIV, SR, HR, TB. And um, we are saying we come together as a, as a society and leaving no one behind. So our motto is everybody counts. Everybody counts. Yes. And in this, this, this ever-changing world, unfortunately, sometimes certain people is left behind. Yes. Now, what is a RASA doing? Uh, in its capacity to ensure that everyone counts and no one is left behind. Thank you so much for that question. You know, as we were collecting the pieces of our work, yes. when Arasa was going forward and trying to, to do things, we discovered that um, there are other components of um, our work that we, we, we needed ideas from other people. And uh, Arasa is a convener of space. We bring everyone together and get ideas. I tell you, everyone knows something some way, and sometimes you don't need to invent a wheel. So Arasa Convince presents the space. We are here in Seychelles. We've been working with them for the longest time, and we are saying to ourselves, for us to sit there in Zimbabwe or in Namibia and think about how things can be done in Seychelles, yet Seychelles have got people in Seychelles. Yes. It's us to come here and say to, to John, for instance, how can we collaborate? How can we work together? How can we ensure that there is reduction of HIV? How can we ensure that the, the marginalized are part and parcel of the work that we do? Yes. So how we do it, Arasa stands at the back and create the space for the people to speak about issues that bother them. Uh, if, if I'm understanding, it is sort of a, like a tra uh, training the trainer. Yes, Yeah. certainly. And Sydney. building on the capacity that you ensure that at any one point <coughs> there is someone available to help. Certainly. And the other things, if you present a space, yes. sometimes you, you, you provide people with the environment and you will be shocked how much people know, how much people can contribute. So we train the trainers and provide them with the resources and the capacities. And among us, those that we train, yes. there are also others that can train us in yes. return. All right. So I'm going to... John, the ladies have been talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair that we bring you into the conversation. Mm. John, un mo pou konsa kre ola fe ko peut-être pou 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 bandi mo de la quoi tu peux plus comprendre. Euh qui rôle qui John is with dans tout ça là? Euh mo connais une a brigade qui qui your baby pare nous dit. So, qui John y fait et qui ça veut dire a brigade? Et qui rôle a brigade is with ensemble avec Arasa? Euh Sylvie um Allow me to speak in English. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I want to recognize the day that we are in today, uh, International Women's Day, and I want to congratulate all the women in Seychelles, the women who are working hard in each and every way to bring food on the table, yes. and their contribution is really, really, really uh, appreciated. Now, coming back to your question, uh, I might have been not the right person to speak about the relations between Arasa and Seychelles. Arasa has been there with Seychelles as long as uh, maybe when I, I came in. And uh, there are veterans who have been there. Uh, I, I must recognize people like just Justin Fremino with Hasso. They have a very long uh, duration of work. 
And it is from those kind of uh, standards that uh, we at the App Brigade are picking up. So um, ARAS has trained people, just like uh, the director said, and uh, one of them is, is myself. And you also agree you're one of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it is something which uh, is, is a reality. So our role as App Brigade in this particular moment was to coordinate uh, a project on uh, BAI. And uh, when we were approached, we, we, we came up with a coalition of partners, uh, about four other NGOs within the country. And each and every uh, NGO had a specific role as we mandate to, to fulfill. So over the year, uh, this has worked very well, and uh, we truly appreciate ARASA for that kind of initiative. So our role at this particular moment was to coordinate uh, the funding towards the different NGOs that were involved in specific areas that uh, they wanted to do. And, and of course, this has been, as you said, an ongoing project yes. with ARASA. What are some of the benefits uh, that we can say the UP Brigade has benefited uh, from ARASA? Um, it's a good question. Um, <clears throat> being at that platform where now we are coordinating the funds uh, to different NGOs, that's one thing that mm -hmm. have raised our status. It's a clear show that uh, we are committed to the work and uh, we have worked over the years through uh, uh, discipline and transparency. And so the benefit that we are getting of now that we are in a different level. Yeah. Uh, now we can add our, on our CV that we coordinated funds from Marasa and uh, each and every NGO. Uh, a successful story in each and every uh, uh, activity that they implemented. So there's an impact in the country through our effort as a brigade. Now you've mentioned some of the activity. You mentioned there are certain activities that have that has happened in Seychelles. Can you name a few uh, of the of the activities that uh, were done through the fundings of Arasa? Uh, first of all, uh, we had four NGOs apart yes. from Up Brigade. Uh, these are the the HIV uh, support group uh, mm -hmm. that is H Hasso. We had uh, a nurse association. And we had uh, the LGBTIA and the uh, ISSF. So each and every NGO went down to their community and came up with the issues that were affecting their community, their, <coughs> their community. So <coughs> through the funding, uh, they were able to reach out to their community. And this, this is felt, it is felt. And I can also say that uh, at our level, at our brigade level, we managed to organize a national dialogue, which we brought in uh, different stakeholders in the country. And I think it was one of the things that came out very strongly, that there's, there are some things, we don't need to leave people behind. There are yeah. some issues that we need to tackle. So basically, I can say that <clears throat> uh, we, we did a, a very good job, and um, each and every sector, had the feeling because we allow each and every NGO to go down and sort out their own issues within their family, yeah. within their, 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 their community, yes. And doctor, you've been in Seychelles uh, a day now? If yes. I'm, a day now. Almost half hours. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps what are some of the, the, um, the, your views on certain, you've met certain people obviously, mm -hmm. um, perhaps you will be encountering others today. What is your expectation through your visit in Seychelles right now? I think the main agenda is to, to coordinate yes. and to ensure that we, we collaborate. Like um, John is saying that we're working with um, a consortium of four partners. Mm -hmm. Arasa is also trained, um, the leaders trained uh, in, in TALP, yes. and we have worked with media, we have worked with um, NHRIs and the parliamentarians. The main agenda is to bring everybody in the same room so that we speak uh, in one accord. If we've got the media that is trained, if we've got the civil society that has got issues, if we've got um, the, the, the young leaders that also are keen in speaking on issues. Let's come together under one roof. Let's come and build together. So for me, I think part of the agenda of my visit is to vid visit every cohort 
I will meet with um, the Up Brigade and other partners, yes. and I will also meet the, the media uh, personnel that we trained, meet the other Talpanians, and also the Nature Eyes, so that we, we see the way forward. Since the training, what has happened? How can we collaborate together? And the other thing that, you, that we have done is um, from Seychelles, we bring everybody else to the regional level yes. so that um, things are discussed from both perspectives. Mm -hmm. If we are looking at uh, issues in Seychelles, are they similar to the issues in Zambia? I how was about to ask you yes. that. Yes. How is Zambia doing it? <laughs> how is Botswana doing it? And how is Zimbabwe doing it? How can we share the lessons learned? We don't need to go through the same thing that other people did. Yeah and uh, found a solution. You just engage, how did you do it? How long did it take? And then you, in that instance, you cut the longest or the duration things could have taken because you have asked for those that have done it better and are ahead of you. So that is the space that we create at regional level for everyone to come together. And we hear everyone else's view and everyone else's point. And you've, you've traveled the southern <coughs> countries of Africa that falls under the Arasa. Yes. Now, what are some of the similarities that you've noticed uh, uh, in the different countries and perhaps what are some of the sh similar challenges, mm -hmm. similar successes, and, yes. and then we'll go to the challenge, or would yes. you rather the challenges first? The challenges <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, for many years we've been um, working with various, I would say, aspects yes. of development. And for others, we're focusing on SRA, HRA, we're focusing on, on HIV. But of late, I think COVID presented another scenario that we did not see coming and we discover that there's need to integrate we don't have to look at things in isolation we are speaking about the digital divide there's telemedicine coming through and every other country is excited about that but there are people that are in the in the hard to reach communities yeah. that don't have that technology that we're talking about and what are we saying if we are saying we want everyone else to access sexual reproductive health information and their rights when they don't have the information. As much as they are willing, the information is not there. We're also looking at the population on the move. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, regional migration, international migration, even internal displacement. Yeah. There is a population that is on the move and what are their reproductive health um, issues that they require, services that they require. How are the migrants along the continuum of their journey treated and how, where do they access care? So of late or going forward, Arasa wants to deeper, we focus on SRA HRA and climate change, SRA HRA and digital divide, yeah. SRA HRA and people on the move. We are looking at this sexual reproductive health uh, in all those aspects I as we go forward in the next strategy. And, 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 and some of the <coughs> success stories, if you are willing to share, through the, the programs offered by ARASA? I think there are many successes. Yes. And uh, part of them, I think at the top of the agenda, I would say the decriminalization. We have uh, engaged through ARASA and its partners yes. with various, um, I would say, countries and their constitutions and their bylaws. Because sometimes if you want to achieve something, you, you have to look at the what is contradicting that? We had laws that were criminalizing HIV transmission. Yes. We have laws that criminalize the same sex. So those sometimes are the laws that counteract the agenda of trying to have access to HIV services for everyone. And if we criminalize the transmission of HIV, how often and how will we get the information and how will we be able to help the communities? So there have been progressive changes in the law in most of the countries. There has been increased awareness and collaboration. And also we have been in spaces where we're speaking with the parliamentarians to say, you are the policy makers. How best can we ensure that the, our policies are progressive? They are not counteracting what we are trying to achieve as communities and societies. And with Seychelles, I know you, you, you represent all the, the southern uh, countries of Africa that falls within the RSA, but in terms of Seychelles, how, are you, um, how do you see the dialogue, the partnership between RSA and the local community in terms of the, the civil so societies, the, the, the parliament, as you say, mm -hmm. legislatures, people that are in power that have the power to, th the political willpower, if yes. we say, to make the changes happen with the help of the civil society. What, what are your thoughts on that? Have you gotten a chance to meet or perhaps in the past even to have that conversation? 
Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. We've actually had a training of the NHRIs. Yes. And uh, I would say there's so much progress, good progress. There's keen interest of every aspect, of every part within the Seychelles for progressive um, development in terms of our organization's mandate is uh, on bodily autonomy and integrity. So when we train the parliamentarians, there is better understanding of what we mean yeah. about bodily autonomy owning your body, owning yourself, so that uh, a body is not a democracy. We cannot go to parliament and discuss about my body. I have to think about my body. So progressively, there has been so much keen interest in the people that make the laws in Seychelles. And also, I've seen, or we have seen as an organization, a lot of progressive, um, positive writing. We've trained the media to speak about issues, to write about issues in the manner that uh, the communities understand, and at the same time, in a manner that is, is, is positive and uh, educational to the society. Long back, you would see that uh, probably when someone is writing, they are writing from their knowledge. Yes. But if they are trained and they belong to a consortium, they now write to inform, they write to communicate, they write to, to share ideas. So we have seen great progress within the Seychelles. And um, as we work through um, the, the, the youth brigade, yes. we are also working to focus on harm reduction. And there's a lot of awareness gradually. It's a process, it's not an event. And we are so sure that with, um, with time, <coughs> not very long, there'll be so much progress. And jo there'll be so much work that is going to be John, yes. vision for the future with the UP Brigade? Um, Arasa is uh, coming up with a very interesting uh, approach this time. Yes. And um, I was just sharing with the director as we were coming. Uh, there's opportunity in, in different areas, actually. Just immediately, she came from, she landed, she told me, John, there's an opportunity for the social societies to progress in different areas. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we can do together. And just to underscore what she was saying about the, uh, the willingness, actually, I'm come back to your point of the political power. Uh, I think Seychelles, is the only country in the, in, the, in, the, in the region where methadone is given for free. Uh, very few countries can afford to bring methadone to the people who are suffering from drug addiction. And uh, we applaud the government of officials for continuing to do that. And uh, that's, that's one point that we can say that uh, the, there's a political will as he said, it's taking long. It, yes. will, it will not be immediately, it will not be the next day. So um, on our side as UP Brigade, uh, we are looking forward to move into the next step. Actually, uh, as, 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 as everybody else know, our main background is, is harm reduction. That's where we are coming from. And that's why we even set up a, a training center, skills training center for, for those the women who are on drug uh, treatment, uh, addiction treatment at uh, Providence. So just come is as one of the way to, to, to deter the, the harm within the people is to keep them somewhere and do positive things. Like they are, they are, they are, they are, they are making clothes, they are doing this and so. The time they spend in our place yes. is really, really having an impact in their life. So as a brigade, uh, we, 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 are, we are open actually. We are, we are moving forward and we welcome the approach that uh, Arasa is taking with us. And uh, we urge other NGOs also to come on board so that we make an impact in the country. Doctor, I like how you said everyone counts. And where does the youth, the younger generation, fit into this plan? Because I know we're talking about digitalization, we're talking about uh, equality, we're talking about the political willpower for, the, uh, for, for people to make change. And in Seychelles, there's been a lot of talk for young people to take a stand and to take the lead in civil societies and in, in, in general. So what are your perspective of the youth in all of what you've said this morning? Thank you so much. I think um, Arasa is taking a deliberate intention mm -hmm. to ensure that the youth are not only involved, but they lead. Okay. And um, for us, probably 50 years from now, we won't be there. So if we make policies that will impact on the youth that are yet to be born, or the youth that are now at the infant stage, it will be unfair for us. So we can't create um, the world for them. They have to be part of the creation. So as Arasa, 
actually we have a symposium that will be taking place on the 29th to the 30th of March. And um, it's the everybody counts. We yes. want to bring everyone to discuss. And we are saying to ourselves, let's reflect on the progress that we've done as civil society as Africa. Let's also re-engage so that we share ideas and hear how best we can work, what has worked in other countries, how can we do it? Yeah. And then the last one is to reintegrate, bring everybody to say, let's reintegrate all the services and work from the same port. And the youth are actually leading most of the, of the events and the activities and the, and the plenary sessions. Because we are saying, let the youth speak about issues that affect youth, rather than us speaking on their behalf. Yeah. Because sometimes we talk about safe abortion, I'm 50. I, I am beyond <laughs> the reproductive age. Why would I be the one talking about that? Yes. We talk about safe sex. We want the 17 year olds, the 21 year olds, the young people to speak about the issues. We speak about drugs. We want them to speak. Let's hear what are the issues that affect the youth. Are they lying idle? Do they have jobs? What is it that bother them? And there is technology. Technology is for the youth. They are the yeah. ones that can create the content that they want to see, that they want to share with their fellow youth. So our youth are actually leading the process and we are following. We are convening the space, creating the platform for them to then function within that platform. Which beckons me to ask the question, Africa is on the move. Africa is moving. Af Africa is leading. Uh, and Arasa being in Africa, promoting all these values uh, with, with the youth, what are your um, personal um, satisfaction from what you've seen happening in Arasa right now? I know uh, you talk yeah, about Arasa, yeah, but yeah, yeah. as a as a personally, as a pers uh, yes, yes, as a leader, I'm so happy to say Africa solutions are in Africa. We have the youth. Yes, we have what it takes for us to be self-sustainable, and it's so interesting to see how keen the youth are coming up, and. All what we need to do is to create the space and let them do it. Our solutions are within Africa. Now, we know that the solutions, uh, sol solutions for Africa is within Africa. Mm -hmm. And what role does this bring Africa into the global space. picture? Yes, the global space, as John has, has contributed. We have to make our space and occupy it. And um, we sometimes let people speak on behalf of Africa. Mm -hmm and speak about the global north and the global south. Africa has to speak about African issues. And we have to know that there is no need to look elsewhere. We have to look within ourselves. We've got all it takes. We are all here. John, yes. any last words before we wrap things up? Um, uh, uh, we, before we terminate the topic conversation this morning? Yes, uh, I want to underscore um, the concept of youth. The civil society in Seychelles uh, is less attractive to the, the youth. Uh, we have very few youth who are taking part in what we are doing. And it gives us a challenge to go back and find out how do we create uh, uh, programs that yes. can attract youth. And we have spoken in many times, uh, we are lacking research work in, 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 our, in our individual NGOs that company of research, which it may attract the youth is missing. Yes. So we need to go back and work and find out how, who are there will be take over. As the director said, I'm also over 50, I'm the fifth floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be here for the next five years doing yes. the same thing we are doing. No, we need some people to come over. And it's, it's a good opportunity that the youth come on board. There is space for them. And how do they come on board, John? Now, now we've, we've, we've talked about coming on board. We talked about perhaps even Dr. Sh your, your shadow uh, uh, fellow to, to take your place uh, when you leave. Ha before we go into p the p doctor's position, let's talk, John, how do, th how do the youth get access to, to that platform? At the moment, the, the challenge we are facing at, as NGOs in Seychelles yes. is that the programs, the programs that can attract youth in what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We have several youth NGOs in the country, yes. I don't deny, but you see, they create another one for them, mm -hmm. but the existing one, yes. like the one I'm leading, the one in other places, you, you don't see the youth participating. We don't, we don't create that space for them to come in yeah. and take over. So it's like 
we people, we are still monopolized. We are still taking everything within ourselves. Okay. So we need to rethink. Now, can I ask you, are mm. there any partnership between such organizations like the S uh, uh, SNYC, SNYC. Uh, um, uh, the schools, perhaps the Ministry of Education? What role do these people uh, have, potentially could have, mm. in, in, in such an organization as, as a brigade? We need to create a component okay. within our NGOs. Mm -hmm where the youth can be engaged. Okay. For example, the research, the research uh, uh, section yeah. within, our, within our organization. So this is a very, a very attractive place where they can move because this is, we are, they are not sitting in the office every two, for 24 hours. They want to move. So we need to create those spaces where there is a research component yes. where the youth can come in. They want to do something in Takamaka. They take the, the, the ride, they go. So yes. this will interest them. And from that point, uh, slowly, slowly, they will be, they will be. They but will is be there already a partnership between SNYC and the Ministry of Education? Perhaps that dialogue has it started, or? I think there are a lot of activities going on. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at, uh, maybe I may not have the right uh, position, but I know yes. that there are a lot of activities going on. But then just to coordinate them into one component where we say, okay, this is the direction where we are going. I think that's what needs to take place now. Now, that Doctor, on, 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 of course, I'm going to ask you questions on behalf of Arasa. What, what, is, what are the plans, and well, the strategic plans for Arasa for the year 2023? Our, actually, we're launching a new strategy Okay. on the 31st of March. Yes. That is a six-year strategy that is ending in 2028. Okay. The main agenda for the new strategy is to focus and is integration, actually. We want to integrate, um, like what I said, the digital divide, the climate change, as well as the the migration mm -hmm. on Israel HR focus and to ensure meaningful involvement of the people that we work with. And um, going forward, we want to create cohorts. What I was speaking to John earlier was that um, when we visit Seychelles, we want to see everybody together, yeah. working together for the common cause, so that there's no disintegration of programs. Yeah. And when we speak about issues, when we work on issues, we are speaking collaboratively. You spoke about the youth. Yes. Going forward, it's actually one of our major components because the questions that we ask ourselves is, where is the youth? What are they doing? And what does youth want? We cannot answer all those questions. Yeah. The youth has to answer the questions. Yeah. Where are they? Where can we find them? What are they doing and what do they want? So answering that question would mean we are involving them. They, they are showing us where they are, what they want and what they are doing and how they want it done. So that integration that we want to create, the space that we want to create, the resources in terms of technical resources and any other kind of resources that we can raise. Even linking up, we want to be a convener and a collaborator. We yeah. don't have, it doesn't have to be Arasa at the front. It just has to linking the, the people to the right people so that there is that coordination. Arasa becomes in terms, uh, as we call it, a facilitator. Yes. Facilitator. Facilitating, sorry, networking. Yes. How certainly. important is networking for Arasa? It's one of our main, main values. Mm -hmm. We believe if we come together, yeah. if we network, if we engage, if we collaborate, there's a lot that we can learn. There's a lot that we can, we can change. We need to build a movement. We need to stand in solidarity with each other. I don't need to be in social physical every year. But if I know that social is doing something, I can also liaise with another partner yeah. that I know probably which is close in the Comoros or somewhere near, or even another somebody who is traveling around. Please, if you pass through Seychelles, meet an organization. They are doing exactly like what you are thinking. They have got the same objective. Why can't we engage with them? Even sometimes we've, we get in touch with donors that have got funding and they've got an idea, yes. but they don't know whom to implement with. Within our network, then we know that there are these organizations that are implementing a particular project in a particular country. Then we, we join the people. I have somebody who's asking, who are some of the partners of Arasa? We have <laughs> more than 100 partners in okay. 18 countries. Yes. And um, the 18 countries are actually in the East Africa, Southern Africa, in the Indian Ocean part of Africa, which is uh, probably, if I will speak about countries, that would be Zimbabwe, Botswana, Zambia, Lesotho, Eswatini, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and of course, Seychelles. Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, we've got quite a lot of partners. And um, I will speak about the Zimbabwean partners. We've got uh, Sierra. Uh, Yes, we've got uh, reps, we've got partners in Namibia, the positive vibes, we've got partners 
up brigade in Seychelles, we've got partner Ucanet in, in, in Kenya, I mean in, in Uganda. So our partners are diverse mm -hmm. in terms of their geographic coverage, the sizes, the scope and the focus. But we are speaking in one accord in terms of um, ensuring that there's access to every service that is provided and that the people's rights are realized. I, I've also uh, been asked uh, to, uh, Arasa obviously has, has funded uh, many projects uh, in these different uh, countries. Now, where does Arasa get its funding from? We've got various, f uh, I would say, partners as yes. well. Because uh, we talk about partnership. If you've got an idea, someone yes. has got the space, someone has got the money, we come together. Yes. So we are funded by organizations from uh, Sweden. We also have got fun funding from uh, Netherlands and yes. we've got other partners uh, from UK, I would not be able to specify Obviously, their names. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now I know Arasa has concentrated in the southern countries of Africa, but mm -hmm. since we are talking of Africa, is there? Um, I, I've known this question has has been discussed before. Uh, potentials for the central and northern, or even western regions of Africa to join Arasa, possibly in the future. Certainly, yes. Okay. Um, even when Arasa started progressively, it yes. was in the Southern Africa. Yes. And then Arasa gradually moved into East Africa, and we're here in yes. the Indian Ocean countries. And certainly, as time goes on, we'll uh, focus in Central Africa and then in, the, in, in other parts of Africa, so that we, we are one Africa, and we speak about the same language. I mean, we speak about the same issue, and we move at the same pace. Our um, issues that confront us are similar, Yes. Though unique. So it is important for us to, to engage with other parts of Africa and see how they do things. And if probably it might be us learning from them or them learning from us. But we, we come together and we eat the elephant together. <laughs> <laughs> John, yes. we're we wrapping up the conversation for this morning. Any last words you want to share with your up brigade members, with the members of the public in general, Seychelles in, in general? And, and perhaps the youth of Seychelles? Uh, first of all, uh, I must congratulate uh, Arasa for the effort that uh, uh, they have taken. Uh, many times in the past, uh, when any organization applies for funds from the donor countries, uh, the last thing you will find out that Seychelles is missing in the list. But Arasa took the initiative to include Seychelles in their, most of their programs, and we truly appreciate. Now, to the UP Brigade members, uh, the work is just starting. Uh, forget about what we have done in the past. <coughs> so we have the elephant in the house, <laughs> and we also all, have, we all have to feed on it. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities to the, the rest of the country that we can work together. And I also must congratulate the, the uh, the NGOs that came together to work on the BI in the last uh, one and a half year uh, for the effort, the work that they did. And to the youth, I want to say that uh, don't shy away, uh, come in. Especially our brigade, we are open. Actually, it's a youth group Where can they meet? Where can they connect with the, uh, the up brigade? How uh, they can they connect with the up brigade? Yes, there's, there's, there's different forums that we, we can uh, connect. First of all, at their forum, the, the, uh, the, the, the youth center, yes. I and mean, then the, the SNYC, uh, and then at SEPS is another central place where uh, we can dialogue, and even at our offices. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot, youth have a lot of, a lot of uh, solution to the problems that the, 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 the country is facing. So we want to put these things in down and see how can we how can we move way really forward. John, where does technology fit into the up brigade? I, I noticed you've mentioned locations, <coughs> but in terms of youth is very digital. Youth yes. is is smartphones, yes. is is technology. Yes. Now how are we implementing that in this strategy for twenty twenty three? If we look at uh, the whole thing we are talking about, it's all about mapping. Yes. How do we locate the ghettos, yes. how do we locate uh, people who are uh, suffering with, uh, we are living with HIV. So within the, within those spectrum, we have the, the, the mapping, uh, uh, the mapping uh, 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 component where yes. we can use digital to uh, locate these areas. 
and then we coordinate uh, the whole process and put it into a program. So youth, they know even much better than me it, when it comes to, to, to digital. So we invite them to come forward, come on board. John, pleasure meeting you. Doctor, I will leave you with the center stage for the last words uh, on behalf of Arasa. What do you have perhaps to, to share with the, with the Seychelles people or even the youth of Seychelles? Thank you so much. I think um, I just want to say our combined efforts are greater than the sum of our individuals. It's very critical that we come together and work together and collaborate. And the space is there. The youth has to come through and claim it. Because sometimes we say we create space, but what we might term space is not space for them. Like you rightfully put to say our youth is technology. Mm -hmm. And um, we are from a generation where we write things a lot. Yes. We talk a lot. We have got volumes and things in the library. How does that relate to a youthful person? So we really have to transform ourselves as well and think ahead and ask the youth how the youth wants to engage yeah. and create that space. But um, we thank the, the upbringing in the space. And to say I'm quite impressed with the way that um, how things are done in Seychelles. There's great collaboration. We notified uh, up brigade that we were coming last week, but it's surprising that in three days they've coordinated and they've come together. For us, that's a very positive, progressive way of working because this is what our intentions are, to say let's come together and discuss things together as a group. John, might be hitting 50s, but we still got the willpower. Yes. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> John, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you this morning. Thank you for coming on the platform. Thank you of so Wasser much, Sylvie. I know we appreciate uh, much uh, this effort. Actually, we are here because of, uh, of your effort. I must say that. Yes. And this is because you have been exposed to Arasa activities. We are De very grateful. Thank you for coming, John. Doctor, thank you for joining us this morning thank as well. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. An honor. And for you, mesdames and messieurs, who are here today, this was a topic of conversation for today.